Thank you so much for um, coming, yeah, joining me in the miracle session today. And um, it started off really well. There's so much light, so much provision of light. And um, so that's where we join together and to, to celebrate that that's available for us. And that we absolutely communicate with one another just by letting that occur. And that sounds maybe easier than it, than it might be for you. But hey, actually, it is a matter of relaxation letting it happen to you, receiving it, and coming into a state in which you can do that. And um, so today we will definitely look at that um, in the sense of looking at what is in the way of having a full-blown experience of love, of um, connectedness, of uh, wholeness, of um, peace, in fact. And um, we do that with a, a little target, all right, so we're going to use today the specific part of uh, the communication that is the, what is keeping you from, um, say so we're not focusing on what is keeping you from having a full-blown experience. No, so today the focus is um, relationships and not so much relationships in specific ways, but more like how your, um, say, grievances hold back your full-blown experience. Because one exception held apart from true perception makes its accomplishments anywhere impossible is one of the lines in the course. And that is that is really true. That's my experience too. It's like, it's unbelievable. So um, we're, we're taking a look at part of chapter 18, the shadow shadows of the dark, shadows of the past. And the other part is, uh, lesson 68 and lesson 68 is um, um, say that's I will check it out it's a really great lesson love holds no grievances so um, we use all that to um, say to come into an say an experience and an awareness of what we can do to have this being undone and so say pave the way clean in fact for um, for your direct communication so and that's i'm going to start off with the lesson and then afterwards we're reading from the shadows of the past a, a couple of paragraphs and um, that is that is really good for study too it's like to but it's full and complete, just like every uh, section is. So um, that's why I use only three paragraphs. That is more than enough for us to, to digest, so to speak. And uh, it will be very clear to you what it means. And, and that it is just like, oh, yes, of course. And oh, my God, I really have to take a look at that for myself, too. And maybe you were already in a program in which you forgave um, people from the past, or maybe you have spent a lot of time doing that. So it does not mean that this is not helpful uh, because it's like the, the vision with which this is given to us is so uh, revealing and so, uh, say, healing that, that that's totally helpful to even read that now too. So that's why I'm starting off with lesson 68. It is a daily lesson. It is the day, say the 68th day of your course training. And in that, it is very helpful to, to just do it and not, I will not talk too much about it or anything like that. Like I have no comments to it. We just want to apply this and use this. And um, I love to do that together with you. So I'm really happy that you showed up and, uh, and that we can do this. So if, you so if you have the book, like the Ortex book, it is on page 318 of the workbook. So it's the second volume of the book, because the books, and book has like seven volumes. So this is volume two. And on page 318, you see the lesson, Love Holds No Grievances. So we're just reading that. We're going through that. Love Holds No Grievances. 
who created you, you were created by love like itself, because that was the lesson of yesterday. Yeah? You were created by love like itself, can hold no grievances and know yourself. Like those two don't go together. You, who were created by love like itself, can hold no grievances and know yourself. To hold a grievance is to forget who you are. To hold a grievance is to see yourself as a body. It is the decision to let the ego rule your mind and to condemn the body to death. So look at what the consequences are of thinking that way. Perhaps you do not fully recognize just what holding grievances does to your awareness. It seems to split you off from your source and make you unlike him. It makes you believe that he is like what you think you have become, for no one can conceive of his creator as unlike of himself. Like it would be impossible that you were created out of something that is different than you are. If love created you, then you are love. And if there's an idea coming up in your mind that is not the same as love, then you'll see that like, no, I cannot be that. But you can accept it as your true um, identity, as your identity. It's not a true identity. Okay, so shut off from yourself who remains aware of his likeness to his creator. Yourself seems to sleep while the part of your mind that weaves illusions in its sleep appears to be awake. Can all this arise from holding grievances? Oh, yes. For he who holds grievances denied he was created by love. And his creator has become fearful to him in his dreams of hate. Who can dream of hatred and not fear God? It is as sure as those it is assured that those who hold grievances will redefine God in their own image, as it is certain that God created them like himself and defined them as part of him. It is assured that those who hold grievances will suffer guilt, as it is certain that those who forgive will find peace. It is assured that those who hold grievances will forget who they are, as it is certain that those who forgive will remember. <laughs> so this is, this is already enough for today, right? <laughs> like this is, this is incredible. It is sure, you know, that those who hold grievances will redefine God in their own image. As it is certain that God created them like himself and defined them as part of him. It is assured that those who hold grievances will suffer guilt, as it is certain that those who forgive will find peace. It is as certain that those who hold grievances will forget who they are, as it is certain that those who forgive will remember. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So is this always a conscious, um, say, decision? Is this always a conscious happening for you? Like, are you always aware of where your grievances lie? Well, probably not, because you forget about the people that you actually hated or the ones that you think did something to you. So in the, in the uh, parts that we're going to read later on with the shadows of the past, you will see that, say, exemplified even more, which is very interesting, very interesting to read too. See, but you, the mechanism is clear. So you, you choose for one and the other disappears, literally. Like if you choose for grievances, you start to not know who you are. You cannot be at peace. It's impossible. See, and, and here there's a, there's a huge field of gray area that ego wants to, like your ego mind wants to uh, formulate that it's not that black and white and that 
you can still do that and that you can hold on to some of it or that you, you know, like this, it wants to make a bargain with you. And with you, I mean, in your mind, this is an, a mechanism that takes place in your ego mind. So not even always conscious at all. So it's like when you feel your uh, guilt for something that you think about someone else, you might be very trained in, in say, suppressing that for a moment or forgetting it, so-called forgetting it. And, and when you can use it, it will come back. Like if the same person does something to you the next time, it is right in your face and it didn't go anywhere. It's like, oh, I got that right here. It's unbelievable how that works. It's amazing. See, and we all have our favorite people, so to speak, where we um, say project this on or use this for, use this up for ourselves. So we're going to do something with that in this lesson. And, and I really love to do this. I really love to, to stand still and actually practice this. So we'll, we will continue on. Would you not be willing to relinquish your grievances if you believe all this were so? Perhaps you do not think that, perhaps you do not think that you can let all your grievances go. That, however, is simply a question of motivation. In other words, are you willing to do that? Well, most of them you want to do that, but just these two are not very attractive to do that because they really deserve it. So now what am I going to do? <laughs> okay, they already popped up in your mind. You will see it in the lesson. They already popped up in your mind. Yeah, those two I'm really talking about. Perhaps you do not think that you can let all your grievances go. That, however, is simply a question of motivation. Today we will find, we will try, okay, we will try to find out how you would feel without them. If you succeed, even by ever so little, there will never be a problem in motivation ever again. So what, what does that mean? If you succeed, even by ever so little, there will never be a problem in motivation ever again. See, this is maybe also a memory that comes up for you. It's like this specific person that was such a pain in the, you know what, um, actually was your savior because he, uh, he or she allowed you to have an experience of letting go of grievances that was actually so revealing to you that is unbelievable i've one in my mind sure absolutely it's like you this person was so incredibly in my face and met this person like weekly a couple of times and we really thought that we worked together but still it was very irritating that she did still the same thing over and over again. And then to see in the moment that you can forgive, so to speak, that you can let go of the grievance and see how, how much better that feels, that you literally jump up in the air and want to thank the person for being so irritating. <laughs> By not being irritating at all, it was just your idea about it. You know, that is, that is what um, makes all the difference. So then to see that that person actually was your savior at the time is so great. So you will never have a problem with motivation again if you have a positive learning experience with this. And if you haven't had one, try to get one. It's just a matter of motivation. Like, do I, I will just try it this time. And, and I will really try to do it. I will follow these instructions that are coming up. And with this one person that's really in my face, I will really try to do that. Okay, it's getting exciting, doesn't it? Begin today's extended practice period by searching your mind for those against whom you hold what you regard as major grievance. Some of these will be quite easy to find. 
Then think of the seemingly minor grievances you hold against those like and even think you love. It will quickly become apparent that there is no one against whom you do not cherish grievances of some sort. This has left you alone in all the universe in your perception of yourself. Okay, so take time. Is that so? So begin today's extended practice period by searching your mind for those whom you hold what you regard as a major grievance, like so irritating this person is irritating the heck out of me. So this one, you have maybe a little list, maybe not too big list, I hope. And then there are those that you have a seemingly minor grievance and they might live close to you and they're irritating you some little bit sometimes, but it's always just this little thing and not much more. And other actually persons in your in your vicinity or in, the, in your relationships that not irritate you? That's a bit of the question, like I translated. Determine now to see all these people as friends. Say to them all collectively, thinking of each one in turn as you do so. I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you are part of me and come to know myself. I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you are part of me and come to know myself. I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you are part of me and come to know myself. Spend the remainder of the practice period trying to think of yourself as completely at peace with everyone and everything, save in a world which protects you and loves you, and which you love in return. Okay, so before that, first think of all these people as friends. Say to them collectively, thinking of each one in turn as you do so, I would see you as my friend and let them just pass by the faces that you know so well. I would see you as my friend that I may re remember who you, you are part of me and come to know myself. So we can do this for a moment. I will see you as my friend, that I may remember you are part of me and come to know myself. I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you are part of me and come to know myself. I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you are part of me and come to know myself. Spend the remainder of the practice period trying to think of yourself as completely at peace with everyone and everything, safe in a world which protects you and loves you and which you love in return. Try to feel safety surrounding you, hovering over you and holding you up. Try to believe, however briefly, that nothing can harm you in any way. Thank you. 
spend the remainder of the practice period trying to think of yourself as completely at peace with everyone and everything, safe in a world which protects you and loves you, and which you love in return. Try to feel safety surrounding you, hovering over you, and holding you up. Try to believe, however briefly, that nothing can harm you in any way. Try to feel safety surrounding you, hovering over you and holding you up. Try to believe, however briefly, that nothing can harm you in any way. Love holds no grievances. When I let my grievances go, I will know I am perfectly safe. Love holds no grievances. When I let all my grievances go, I will know I am perfectly safe. Love holds no grievances. When I let all my grievances go, I will know I am perfectly safe. So in the short practice periods today, which you can do a couple of times in a day or every hour, whatever you are up to, love holds no grievances. Let me not betray myself with capital S. Love holds no grievances. Let me not betray myself. In addition, repeat the idea several times an hour in this form. Love holds no grievances. I would wake to myself by laying all my grievances aside and wakening in him. Love holds no grievances. I would wake to myself by laying all my grievances aside and wakening in him. Love holds no grievances. Yeah, that's great. So this is this is great training. You know, it's like it's wonderful to do this. And um, so there's, um, you see that the link to, for instance, undoing of fear is pretty obvious. You know, it's like you're afraid also because you attack your brother, and when you attack your brother, something comes back to you because you literally project it outwards instead of, you know, letting it just come in, of let, letting it stay in instead of that. So that's, um, yeah, that's, that's good to know that this practice is for that, to feel safe, to, to come to the experience of who you really are, coming in, say, contact with your true self. And then that's a very practical, simple exercise, in fact. And, and there's always material to practice this. 
<clears throat> so for today, you can do this and, and see what happens because it actually is, is such a relief to forgive, you know, to let go of your grievances. Like, I, like it's said in the, in the lesson two, it's like once you have done that, once you've done that with one person or one situation, you, you will never have a problem with motivation to do it again. So you want to clean it up. You want to clean everything up, you know, and it's like, it's so inherent in the, in the human way of thinking to attack and get used to that again. And, and so this is really up to you to, to stay on the path, practicing this, you know, to stay vigilant against your mind, wandering off into the temptation to think that you are, that it's okay to judge a brother or to, it's okay to hold a grievance even ever so little. Like in one of the other lessons, he said, the merest frown is already a sign that you're holding a grievance, like the merest frown. Well, check it out. How many times you do that during the day? Like, huh? <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. So this is, yeah. It's great that these exercises are here and we can return back to the base, so to speak, where, where you can be at peace. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, so chapter 17, Shadows of the Past, is we used the word in the class the other day, shadows of the past, or shadows, dream figures, dream shadow figures. Um, so now here is the uh, specific expression of that. Like it will, it will make it very clear what it is. And I will, I will read that to you, say, starting with the first paragraph. Shadows of the Past, T17D, and it's on page 171 from chapter 17 in the Urtext, volume one, the textbook. To forgive is merely to remember only the loving thoughts you gave in the past and those that were given you. All the rest must be forgotten. Forgiveness is a selective remembering based not on your selection because you, you did this too. You made a selection for yourself too. Like what is loving thoughts and what is... Um, or what isn't a loving thought, you, you have some confusion about that. So here it is. Forgiveness is a selective remembering based not on your selection. So this is going to be done for you, but more of that later. For the shadow figures you would make immortal are, say, quote-unquote, enemies of reality. Be willing to forgive the Son of God for what he did not do. The shadow figures are the witnesses you bring with you to demonstrate he did what he did not. Because you brought them, you will hear them. And you who kept them by your own selection do not understand how they came into your minds and what their purpose is. See, it's okay to read this a couple of times, but it's really great. So to forgive, actually, there's no action required from your side in terms of you don't have to make the selection. You don't have to, say, do anything but allowing this process to occur to you. So also not uh, make a selective remembering yourself. So that's also something you don't have to do. To forgive is merely to remember only the loving thoughts you gave in the past and those that were given you. All the rest must be forgotten. Forgiveness is a selective remembering based not on your selection. See, that that is going to be done for you is also very beautiful because they will appear in your awareness suddenly that you weren't even aware of 
that it was a loving, loving thought that you gave. It might look totally different, but here it is. Here's a loving memory that is being, say, revealed to you. And see, so like, oh, that was so different than I thought the whole situation was. Or then I experienced it for myself in my memory. So let this selection take place for you. Uh, that's so much better. Oh, that's the one that works, really. For the shadow figures, you would make immortal are enemies of realities of reality. Be willing to forgive the Son of God for what he did not do. The shadow figures are the witnesses you bring with you to demonstrate he did what he did not. Because you brought them, you will hear them. And you who kept them by your own selection do not understand how they came into your minds and what their purpose is. So I know that this is going to say, shake up some memories for you too you know and that is that's wonderful so um we just did this beautiful exercise of this beautiful lesson and you know that the persons that you take with you in the sense of that you use for it to confirm that they did something to you are highly on the list for for to be looked at in lesson 68 you know it's like this this might stir up some memories, some names, and ones that um, ones that actually are really in your way to to just experience peace. In other words, this is a great invitation to to let this healing occur to you, in which you really say clean out those you carry with you that you use literally to to in fact to not experience peace and not experience your the totality of who you are. And that, that seems to be a bit of work, but it's actually only the willingness that you have to show to, to let this change occur. It's like you will have to let go. You cannot hold on to them. It's the same with the grievances that we were practicing, letting go of the grievances in Lesson 68. Like you cannot hold on to them. If you hold on to them, you lose vision. If you hold on to them, you lose peace. If you lose hold, hold on to them, you, you're just alone in this mega universe, wondering what the hell happened, you know? So scoop it up like here's another one of those they represent the evil that you think was done to you you bring them with you only that you may return evil for evil hoping that their witness will enable you to think guilty of another and not harm yourself they speak so clearly for the separation that no one not obsessed with keeping separation could hear them otherwise they offer you the reasons why you should enter into unholy alliances which support the ego's goals and make your relationships the witness to its power, to the ego's power. It is these shadow figures which would make the ego holy in your sight and teach you that you do it, keep it safe. What you do, keep, what you do to keep it safe is really love. In other words, you're defending, you're defending those that you take with you to use against God. You take them with you and you use them. And you actually see that like you translate it in some way. You translate it into a loving act of yourself. And you might share that with, with others too. It's like you might share that and really make a pact against those that are, you know, doing that to you. And really thinking that that is not hurting you, but them. Like, no, they are not part of this anymore. And actually, you include them in your thought system and use them to attack yourself. So that is the mechanism, mechanism behind all this. So it's like these are the first two uh, paragraphs of this 
chapter. It's so great to to have some say deep basic uh, understanding of this, and see what your say conscious or even unconscious mind is doing in this, because it goes. See, the ego works pretty quick and slippery, so to speak, with a lot of gray area, with a lot of uh, all kinds of noise that you don't even know anymore. Like there's a chaos that is suddenly there and you take out of it what you can use to defend yourself and thinking that that then was the situation, like on the psychological part of it. So that is um, not so helpful, of course. So luckily we can do these exercises to bring it back, to bring yourself back to um, okay, here it is. I hand it over. Here's my, say, the, the weapons I use against myself, using my brother to, to keep me in hell. And um, so that is an essential part in waking up to take a really good look at that and also to hand it over, you know, to hand it over because you are not making the selection about what your loving memories are. No, let them be given to you because, and you, you think like, well, really, is that possible to do it that way? Yes, absolutely. So if you let go of your control and selection in that sense and um, say, I'm willing to let go of your story, really, your story, then like that can be a new start for you, like a new entering into presence instead of dragging your past with you and uh, feeling heavy, not knowing how to get out of it, confusion and uh, depression, um, feeling lonely, all of that, like that, that comes with it. It's like the side effects of, of using grievances against your brother consciously or unconsciously. All right. So that's great. So another, um, now, one more paragraph I would love to use. The shadow figures always speak for vengeance and all relationship in which, into which they enter are totally insane, without exception. These relationships have as their purpose the exclusion of the truth about the other and of yourself. That is why you see in both what is not there, and make of both the slaves of vengeance. And why would ever remind you of your past grievances, no matter how distorted the associations by which you arrive at remembrance may be, it attracts you and seems to you to go by the name of love. And finally, why all such relationships become the attempt at union through the body for only bodies can be seen as a means for vengeance. Wow. Mm. So why suddenly this idea of bodies coming in, you ask? Like, what does that have to do with anything? And it's like, well, attacking and bodies really, you know, is, is like a very useful tool for separation. That's where you used it for, like, no, I'm not loving that one, but I love this one, or I hate that one. Do you hate that one too? It's like you, you have an object that you, that you can project your, your hate on on your, and all of that. So, and that becomes, before you know it, it's like that becomes attractive to, to side with someone else in this thinking we both think that this person is crazy. And that's why I'm so happy to be with you. You understand me. You know, it's like, you understand me. I love you for that. And it has nothing to do with love. So it's like, okay, it's an allegiance, like your, your allies here in which you can attack your brother. So you, you, you do this together or with a group or with, with a whole organization or even a country can do that. And you use bodies for that. You can, you can do all kinds of things with bodies and surely using them to, to 
say separate them or yeah who knows what to do with it but using it for attack that's why the body becomes a central theme in the idea of vengeance so you remember those days that you were sharing this with your partner or with somebody you really liked like that you had the same judgment about other persons and thinking that because of that, that you belong to one another and that you actually felt love for this person for that. You know, you, you, you have been in relationships like that and maybe you're still in one, you know, that see, it is good to realize that and say like, well, that is so insane. I can't believe it that I'm doing that. I can't believe I have to stop this. I have to really take another look at this and hand it over so that it can be healed. Because, see, you you wonder why you don't have a full-blown experience of the love of God. Suddenly you remember, oh my God, look at this. I, I'm actually holding a grievance, like I'm actually attacking my brother. And I wasn't aware of it. Or it was because it became such a pattern that I... I didn't know what to do with myself. Like I didn't even know how to get out of it. So that's why it's great to have all the help in the universe to, to have this being undone because in the end, nothing happened. See, now it's not up to you to make a selection of, okay, so now I'll just keep my loving memories and forget the rest. Because see, the ego loves to help you with that because it has a little, say a little, yeah, a little drawer here. <laughs> with some names that it just keeps just for certainty is like, well, let's keep some names. We don't necessarily need to give it all away. Now let's keep some in my little drawer. So it's like, that's not a good idea. It's like you, you really can't be trusted with your own mind. You really can't be trusted with your own ego mind. You know, it always wants to make a deal or being corrupt. So that's why, you want to let the selection come to you. And that's what's so great. And that's a real opportunity and a possibility. So that's, there you have it. So this, yeah, this concludes more or less the, the class for today, because I think we, we covered quite a nice uh, chunk where, where there's work to do. You know, it's like, yeah, let's let's take a look at this today or uh, do this lesson one more time or maybe read one more time the first three paragraphs of the just because I don't I just want this to be in my awareness. I want to know this. I want to see that I can be free of judgment and of um, say vengeance and that I can actually start to know really what love is and seeing that in the direct communication with the totality of who I am, um, I, I start to love everyone for no reason and not having to make my little teams and allies to, to be able to survive here. So that's what I love to extend to you today. So thank you for, um, for being here, for listening, for joining in and for practicing with me. And um, see you soon. Thank you.